Grace and peace to you all, people of God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together for truly we serve an awesome God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty, awesome God that we serve. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father, we just come to tell you thank you. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for another day. We thank you, Lord, for how you kept us throughout this day up until this appointed time. We say thank you, Jesus. Now, Father, we pray now, God, that your word will fall on good grounds, oh God. I pray now, God, that you would touch the minds and the hearts of your people, oh God, that we would not just be hearers of the word, oh God, but we must be doers of your word, oh God. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah for your protection, your guidance. Oh God, we thank you for the love, oh God, that you have upon your people, oh God. Hallelujah for the word of God said, by love and kindness have you drawn us unto you, oh God. And Father, we are grateful that you love us so much, oh God. Oh God, that you will continue to send your word, oh God, to your people, oh God, that will bring about a change in their lives, oh God. Father God, we thank you now for all that you have done and that that you're about to do. We cancel every assignment of the evil one, every evil spoken word, oh God. It will not prosper in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. We cancel every work and every device that the enemy tries to use against us. It will not work, oh God. And we say thank you, Jesus, Father. We thank you, God, that we are covered. We thank you, God, that we are protected. We thank you, God, that no weapon that's forming against us is going to prosper, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that we are prospering in everything, oh God, that's set to our hands in this hour, oh God, that we are producing much fruit in this hour. And Father, we say thank you, Jesus, Father. We give you all glory, all honor, and all praise in Jesus Christ's holy and precious name. We do pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Truly, we thank God for another day. We thank God for what he is doing, people of God, in the name of Jesus. People of God, I want to encourage you in the word of God today that as people of God, we must realize that when you play with the devil, hallelujah, that there is a cause. There is a cost of playing with the enemy. And oftentimes, people of God, we begin to take chances in life when it comes down to sinning and doing things that's against God. We begin to take chances. A lot of times we will hear the word and we'll hear God is bringing a word of correction and telling us to come out of sin, to telling us, you know, to touch not the unclean things again and he will receive us. And, and, and oftentimes we'll hear God proclaiming this and he begins to use his service, my God, to begin to tell us these things. And a lot of times we err from the truth and we begin to do those things which are opposite on what the Lord is saying. And so a lot of times we give in to the enemy and we begin to operate by the flesh instead of the spirit. And so when we take these chances a lot of time, if we don't see anything happen or we don't see the recompense, we continue to operate in that particular thing. And if you think about it, let's think about Samson. Samson lied three times to Delilah when she was trying to get him to tell her where his strength lies so the Philistines could, um, could destroy, could arrest him, could destroy him. Hallelujah. To know where his power you know, they wanted to know where his power was. And so, and they know that um, they could not defeat Samson unless they knew where his strength was. And so when you look at the word of God, and that's in the book of Judges, when you look at the word of God and it begins to tell us that she began to ask him and he began to play with her, he began to lie. And so each time he told her a lie, you know, it wasn't what, um, when he would tell her where, where his strength was and it wasn't true. Then when the Philistines came, he was, and they began to try to tie him up. He was able to break a loose each time. And so a lot of times people got, we don't realize that we play with the enemy. We play with the enemy's tools until you get to a place of being weak. But you don't see it. You don't see the trap of the enemy because you're playing games. Hallelujah. And that's what Samson did. He began to play. Instead of doing what the word of God said, when the Bible said, God said, submit yourself to God, resist the devil and he will flee. Fight against him. Fight against the temptation. Hallelujah. When you know that it's against God, we must fight against these things. And so what happened was, is that when you begin to read the word of God, 
Samson played and then what happened, his wife Delilah, she began to tell him, if you love me, you're not telling me, you know, the whole truth. You lied to me three times. And she began to tell him this and then she began to cry. She began to get emotion. And so the Bible said that she, she, she daily, she began to ask him daily until it vexed him to death. As the Bible said, he got so tired until he began to give his heart to Delilah and he began to tell her where his strength lies. Hallelujah. And so all the plans of the enemy, my God, with um, all the plans that they had for Samson, my God, it was it was performed. Why? Because he played with it. And a lot of you are playing with sin. And a lot of times you hadn't seen the recompense of the sin. And so you continue in it. Hallelujah. Not realizing is that what does the devil come to do? He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So it's his objective to get you out of the will of God so he can destroy you. And so if we don't recognize the time that we're in and the things that God is calling us to, that we begin to submit ourselves to the things of God, then the enemy, the plots and the schemes that he has for you, you are going to end up falling right into the hands of the evil one. Why? Because you're playing games and you're thinking that nothing happened this time. Surely I can try it again. Hallelujah. And then we ask ourselves, how did I end up in this position? How did I end up in this place? Let's use marriage for an example. If you have a husband and a wife and they're married, and as that husband or as that wife, either or, if that wife began to see someone hallelujah, and knowing she's married and they begin to give her a little attention and she see what's going on. But instead of her, you know, canceling that spirit at the moment, she began to say, okay, because, because what she's doing, she's enjoying the, the, she's enjoying, um, the compliments. Hallelujah. And so what we don't understand is the enemy began to plant those types of things. And when we don't cancel it, and then we be then, then we begin to make excuses and say, well, I'm not sleeping with him or anything. You know, I'm just having a little bit of fun. And so we think that these things are fun when we begin to do it. And now we see we begin to play with, my God, this other man when you're married. And so here come these spirits and you kind of, you know, you're baiting yourself in and you don't even realize it. Not you baiting yourself. The enemy is baiting you in, my God. So now that he can get you out of the will of God. And once you get out of the will of God, then you coming back to God and say, God, how did this happen? And then God has to reveal to you is how, how, does it ha how did it happen? It's because when you see it, when you seen the enemy coming, my God, you didn't stop it. You didn't resist the devil. You welcome him on in because of your flesh. Hallelujah. And see, what you don't understand is the devil has such an awesome plot. Come on. Hallelujah. He studies you. He know the things that you have inside of you that he can entice you to get you out of the will of God. And the thing is, as the body of Christ, huh, we don't really study, my God, the weapons that we have to fight against the works of the enemy. Remember, the Bible tells us that he's your adversary, the devil, my God, he seeketh whom he may devour. So he's trying to see how can I devour them? And you're not realizing because you're getting a little attention, whether it's the male or the female, it does not matter. And because you begin to get this attention, then the enemy begin to get in your mind and say, huh, you see your husband not giving you that kind of attention no more. You see your wife is not giving you that attention anymore. And what you don't understand is all this is, is a plot and a scheme of the enemy. He's trying to see how can I get them out of the will of God. And I'm using marriage as an example. And I thank God, hallelujah, because a marriage can be something very powerful. Hallelujah. Because you have two in a marriage, even though we are one. Hallelujah. And what the enemy wants to do is divide a lot of marriages so you can't get strong in God and begin to destroy his works. And so these are some of the attacks that the enemy begins to do in the lives of the people, hallelujah, to get them out of the will of God. And instead of us casting down these imagination and resisting the devil, we are falling prey to the enemy's work. And what you're saying to yourself is, well, my husband don't tell me how good I look. Well, my husband don't tell me this. He don't compliment me no more. He don't do this and he don't do that. That's a trick of the enemy. Now, the same way that you are believing God, my God, huh, for the blessings of God. You believe in God for your healing. You believe in God to save your children. The same God, my God, can restore your marriage. Huh? The same God, my God, can put that love back in you on what uh, the love that you once had for your husband and even grace. 
greater or your wife or even greater. Hallelujah. And see, we've got to realize the attack of the enemy. If you're not married, he will put people in your pathway to tell you you look good. My God, to tell you that you're handsome and begin to tell you these things that you might have not heard before. Hallelujah. But the, the, the objective of the enemy is to get you out of God's will. So it is going to cost you something. My God, when you allow yourself to play with the enemy's devices, uh, when you allow yourself, my God, to be driven out of the will of God, it is going to cost you something. And Satan is right there. He is right there waiting. He's waiting to see how can I get them out of position. So it's going to cost you something. It costs you something, my God, to not cancel the very works of the devil. So you got to stop playing with the tools of the enemy and learn the weapons of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Learn the weapons of the word. My God, that we're canceling every assignment of the enemy because he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But you think it's a game. You feel like it, there's nothing happened now. Oh, oh, I already did it one time. There's nothing happened. What you don't understand is you are on right track of what the enemy wants you to be. You're, you're on the right track, yes, on the place that he wants you to be. And see, you don't understand that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he's trying to get you fully out there. Come on. Hallelujah. Because it's his purpose to destroy you. Hallelujah. So when he start getting into your minds and then he start getting into your emotions, uh, my God, my God, to get you so out of the will of God until now you feel like, my God, I know God is not going to accept me. Not realizing it's not just about God accepting you, but it's about the recompense, my God, that you have to pay for being in sin and disobeying the voice of God. And so here come God begin to tell us, hallelujah, when we look at Ephesians, the fourth chapter, these are the things that God wants us to do. So stop playing with the enemy. When we look at um, Ephesians, the fourth chapter, and the first verse, it said, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord. And Paul was talking. And he was talking about being a prisoner of the Lord. And this was his commitment to God. This was his relationship. He was constrained. Hallelujah. His relationship and his faithfulness unto God. So he lets you know, I was a prisoner of his. Hallelujah. And see, that's why you got to, you got to be in constraint. Uh, to the spirit of God that you begin to submit yourself to God that you block out these sounds that the enemy is trying to tell you that your enemy that your husband doesn't love you he's looking at other people and all these things but see you as a woman of God if you begin to get in prayer my God and you can cancel the very assignment of the enemy that's trying to bring division in your home my God my God you begin to trust the heart of God and you'll begin to see things change you begin begin to shut the mouth of the enemy and say Satan you are a liar and you begin to tell him the word of the God, uh, the word of the, the word of the Lord and you begin to see the manifestation begin to manifest in your home same thing with the husband if you feel like your wife is not loving you like the way you desire to be loved you get before the Lord and you begin to pray because God said there are so many prayers uh, that go at the fleshly and earthly things uh, he said I want my people to stop praying uh, my God by spiritual things uh, if you see that they're out of the will of God uh, you need to pray oh my 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 you need to pray come on uh, you need to pray against that spirit uh, and that attack of the enemy for Satan comes to kill steal and destroy here come Paul said but I am a prisoner Therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Hallelujah. Now, here come Paul telling us these things. Come on, let's go to Colossians. Hallelujah. The first chapter and the 10th verse. Huh? Because, see, this is how you need to walk worthy of the vocation which you have been called. The 10th verse says that ye might walk worthy. Of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. Walking worthy is walking properly and that's correctly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fulfilling, pleasing, full, excuse me, fully pleasing unto God. See, this is how you're going to walk worthy. Of the vocation which you have been called to. 
You're going to live correctly. Hallelujah. Fully pleasing unto God. Now the Bible says, unto all pleasing, be fruitful in every good work. Hallelujah. And increasing, increasing, growing in the knowledge of God, knowing who God is, knowing how to operate in the things of God, knowing how to operate in the things of the kingdom that we defeat the mighty works of the devil. Oh, my, my. All his works. Hallelujah. Not mighty works of his, just all his works, uh, all works of the devil that we begin to destroy. Everything he tries to sin, we begin to destroy. Why? Because I'm increasing in the knowledge of God. And when you increase in the knowledge of God, you don't think like a natural man and you don't think like a natural woman. Because when you learn of God, he began to teach you the things to say. He began to teach you how to war. He began to teach you how to defeat your enemy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And these things are pleasing unto the Lord that when we seek after him, my God, his words and his instruction, my God, my God, and allow this flesh to die daily. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That we learn of him. Hallelujah. So that's how we begin to walk. My God, worthy, living properly and correctly. Come on, huh? my God, fully pleasing unto the Lord. This is what he's calling his people to let you know that you continue to play with the enemy and the enemy is continually to drive you all farther and farther away from God. And that's exactly what he wants to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is exactly what he wants to do. I can remember some years ago. My husband was watching the Animals Channel, and that's something that I don't really watch. And he was watching it, but I came in there, and I began to sit down, and I began to watch it with him. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh. oh, excuse me. Didn't get the water. Um. began to watch it with him and there was a herd of um <clears throat> I forgot the type of animals it was um I can't remember the type of animals it was but all of them was in a herd together and all of them walked together what they did was they put the young ones in the middle because they were protecting them I want to think they were protecting them from the lions don't quote me on that because I can't remember. But anyway, the objective was that he was showing me that all of them was traveling together. So they kept the, the young ones in the inside. And so somehow, because what, what the lions did was they set aside and, they, and, and what they were waiting on is for one of them to get out of the herd. Because if they could get one, because while they were together and they was in togetherness, they didn't try to harm any of them. But they was waiting for one to get out of position. And how many of you know there was one, there was one of the young ones. They began to get out of position as the herd was going and they kept going forward. But it was one that lingered to the side until they got to the side until what that lion did. He was, he was able to come in and attack. People of God, that's just like us when we get out of the will of God. That's what Satan sits and wait. He sits and wait patiently for you to get out of the covering of God, of Jesus Christ. My God, he waits, my God, for that perfect moment that you are not uh, that you're not praying like you should. You're not fasting like you should. You're not studying like you should. You're not before the Lord like you should. So he waits until you get so weak. Uh, my God, until he then starts sending these enticing spirits. Uh, my God, whatever you, whatever area you might be weak in, he began to send to entice that spirit. My God, to get you fully out of the will of God, when God began to tell us, uh, as Paul began to instruct, uh, I beseech you, my God, hallelujah, to walk worthy of the vocation, uh, my God, what God has called you to, uh, you need to be so excited uh, that God called you his son and his daughter, my God, my God, uh, that you want to be fully, my God, pleasing unto him, oh, my, my, yes, Lord, you want to be fully pleasing unto him, Hallelujah. 
And so he began to give us instructions, hallelujah, on what to do and how to do these things, people of God. But a lot of times we are resisting God instead of resisting the devil. Oh, my, my. Yes, Lord Jesus. Not realizing that the devil says, I want to kill you. I want to shield from you. I want to destroy you. Hallelujah, Jesus. And those are the things that the devil is desired to do for you. He's desired to do unto you. And so his purpose is to let you keep on playing with sin. Oh, yes, yes, yes. He wants you to keep on playing with sin. He wants you to keep on being out of the will of God. Hallelujah. Because he wants to devour you. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wants to take your strength away from you. Hallelujah. You know, staying in the presence of God, you know, building yourself up in the, your most holy faith. Uh, my God, praying in the Holy Ghost. Uh, you know, these things give you strength uh, that when you feel weak, uh, my God, that God begin to give you that strength. Uh, my God, that you can't even speak of uh, because you don't even, you can't even, you can't even explain to nobody uh, how I got the strength uh, because it's the strength of Jesus Christ. Uh, and so these are the things that God is desiring to get his people to. Uh, but the people got to wake up, my God, uh, and realize that it's going to cost you something. Ah, uh, it's going to cost you something to continue to play with the devil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Playing with the devil is going to cost you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You think because nothing happened and you feel like you escaped. Huh? You, you have not escaped. Huh? He's waiting on this present time. He want to get you so far out there. My God, my God, oh my God, that it seems like it's no hope for you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's why we shouldn't play with the enemy's tools, but we need to learn the ways of Jesus Christ. We need to learn of his ways. We need to learn of his voice. And that's our relationship with God. Because it's going to cost you something. You playing with the devil, it's going to cost you something. It is going to cost you something. It cost Samson when he continued to play. Hallelujah. Right into the hands of the enemy. He played himself right into to the hands of the enemy. Because he kept playing. And some of you are still playing. And God saying, it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you something that you're playing with the enemy. Hallelujah. And a lot of people say, oh, God forgives us. Yes, he forgives us. But do you know what you have to go through, even with the forgiveness. Come on. Hallelujah. Because there are some things that God said that we will suffer if we do certain things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can get forgiven, but honey, you still got to go through some things. It's called recompense. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So why suffer? My God, on, on that side of suffering. But suffering for the kingdom's sake is a good suffer. That means suffering for righteousness. Now, you have to suffer for that as well, but not suffer because of sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the enemy does not want to see you progress in the things of the kingdom. When Jesus Christ began to tell us, let's go to Colossians 2 and 6. <clears throat> and the Bible says, as ye have therefore received, because you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, and you say you accepted him. You say that you received him. The Bible says, so walk in him. Walk ye in him. So the Lord wants us to walk in him. Live correctly. Fully pleasing unto the Lord. People of God, let's come out of sin. Let's come out of darkness. Because it's going to cost you something. For playing with the devil. Be encouraged.